Recently, I was watching Saturday Night Live, and I saw a skit where instead of five-hour energy, it was five-hour empathy. I thought it was an idea that was pretty crazy. I didn't know anything about empathy, and how in the world was I supposed to deal with five hours of it? So I decided I wanted to learn more about empathy and how to empathize better. Now, empathy is defined as the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. It is instead of walking up to a funeral and saying, you know, it would really be like that sometimes. No, instead it is saying, I can see how upset you are and I want you to know how loved you are. And I would love to be able to talk with you and help you in any way. Now, I have learned how to use unconditional love and how to put myself in another's shoes to help guide them through their storm. My mother is also a social worker and has been able to teach me many techniques with various situations. Now, the year 2020 has brought light to this topic of racial injustice that has happened across the nation and brought into question how different people react to different situations. Now, how should you react to these things? How can you help someone that is currently having to deal and go through the unimaginable? Now, I believe that if more people can empathize with one another, then we as a community can be happier. Today, I will share with you how to go through the steps of having empathy, how to acknowledge when someone might need empathy, and how to practice empathy. Something most people don't know is the difference between empathy and sympathy. The first step is to recognize when someone might want help. First and foremost, you should never place yourself as their therapist or any other medical personnel. It should be with their permission and with proper evidence and reasoning that you should help them. All right, so first we're gonna start with their body language. If you see your friend in the corner curled up in a fetal position or in a ball, then that means that they are insecure of with either themselves or the place that they're in. It is what I like to call the ball of protection. Now, if they have their hands on their head and they're having to dig their nails into their head, that means that they're having to put a lot of concentration into the problem at hand, in which case you need to also prepare for that. Secondly, you need to try to recall if their actions have been off recently. Try to see if they've had mood swings, if their sense of humor has changed, lack of energy or will to do something. Try to see if there's a change in their appearance or even changes in their communication with their tone and responses. While this might not always yield that they need help, it's a good start. All right, so now that we've noticed their body lines, their body signs, and acknowledge that your friend might want help, you can now start to empathize with them. Now, empathy is very different from sympathy because when you empathize, you must show them that you actually care. Now, you should never go straight up to them and ask them, your dog died recently. I'm really sorry for you. And instead, try to start with a normal conversation. Try to ask them about their day, ask them if everything's okay, and if they would like to talk to you about anything whatever it might be. It's important that you show them your full attention. Never be judgmental towards them or give dramatic expressions. Try putting yourself in their shoes or mirror them in an exact. Here's an example. If they give you a 10 paragraph text message about how their boyfriend is the worst person in the world, don't just respond with, man, that really sucks. Instead, try to mirror their responses. Instead, put at least a, put a paragraph into there saying, hey, it's gonna be okay. Here's what we're gonna do to help. You want to, as they go through their story, you wanna to try to ask questions if anything is unclear. If it seems like they've skipped over something, try to make sure that they go through the full storyline because it's through there that they might, through that gap, that could be the tool to help stabilize them. Ask them if they want a hug. Oftentimes, some people just wanna be held and hugs are your way to do it. Your presence is one of the things that just really matters to them. But always make sure to ask before it, because depending on the person and situation, it could be a trigger. Wow, that was powerful. But how do we make sure that this is a skill available through future reference? Recently, New York Times has released an article showing how you can practice empathy in your everyday life. First, try talking to new people. Talk with people of different upbringings or different cultures than you. This can help you learn how different perspectives and situations in everyday life. Live in someone else's shoes for a day. Instead of making every day the same, try something new. You know, one of the hardest points to get across is to admit that you are always biased. While you might have become well-rounded, once you have come to a decision, you typically will stand by it and are not able to see another person's perspective. For example, you were given privileges the day you were born that others don't have. 
Now, if you say, for example, if you're white, you typically don't have to worry about police. However, you do have to worry about self-image and the other stereotypes that are perceived of you. Another, another step is to listen to other sources and to read more. This will get you out of your social bubble. Lastly, don't make yourself the center of everything. Remember that your surroundings and the people and the world around you are just as important. Acknowledge what you can do to help someone. And just as Michael Jackson said, make that change. I have been going through life now and I have not been caught up in everyone's sorrows. I'm an, I am instead able to acknowledge what I can do to help and when I can help. I can make sure to help make a difference by practicing empathy. Today I have shown you empathy and how we as a community can utilize this to work together and make the world happier. This is done through recognizing when someone might want help, how to empathize with them, and how to practice this in your everyday life. In conclusion, I look forward to see how when we choose to listen and step outside of our social bubbles, we can make a difference in this world. Now how can you be a better person and a friend through the power of empathy?